What's up, everybody? This is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today, I want to talk about the Gecko Trading Bot layering buys and sells. So, let's take a look at Trading View right here. So, as an example, I just want to show you guys how a layering buy and sell works. A traditional buy and sell is simply you buy at the bottom right here and hopefully sell at the top. Whereas a layering buy and sell, you would say you want to buy some over here because you saw a dip. And then okay, you bought over here, you're using only a portion of your fiat portfolio. So in my case, it's US dollars. So let's say that if I had a thousand dollars, only buy like let's say 30% over here, and then the market went against me and it dropped more. But now I have more money to buy, and I was like, okay, I'll buy somewhere over here because it dropped more, and then I'll buy some more even down here, trying to capitalize on that last drop right there, and then from that point on. I'm able to sell for profit. So let's say I sold, let's say 50% of it right over here, right after it peaked the first time. Change the color so you can see a little bit better. And now sell again right over here after the second peak. So probably won't catch that top candle. I'll probably catch the bottom right over here, somewhere around there. So that's the idea of a layering buy and sell so that you can maximize your opportunity and reduce your risk of going all in at once. So how do we do this in Gecko? The coding itself is not that hard like to, to modify it, but there are quite a bit of issues and I'm just going to go over it with you guys. So the first is, I would suggest you guys go over in, into my modded Gecko into the DCA branch. DCA is dollar cost averaging and I made a video in the past showing you guys I modified a, a Gecko trading bot just for dollar cost averaging. So the reason why I'm asking you guys to look into this branch here is because this is the first step you need to do. You kind of need to break Gecko in a certain way because Gecko, by default, it only lets you do one buy followed by one sell. If we go into the code in the DCA branch here, you see that the first thing we need to do is kind of break certain things like the exposure where we changed it from like 10% to 100%. That's not so important actually. The main part is actually breaking the part where it checks the direction. With Gecko, once you issue a buy order, it won't let you issue another buy order. So we need to break that code, that portion of the code where it checks for that. So this is the code right here. So if new direction equal equal to this dot current direction, basically if your uh, new direction is a buy and you previously bought or currently in the buy position, it's not going to do anything. And that's one of those things where it just returns and doesn't even notify you that something happened. It, I would have preferred if it warned you at least, but the whole point is we're getting rid of this completely. In order for layering buy and sell to work, you need to remove this part of the code. Now let's get into what I actually have to modify to bring in the layering process into Gecko. Inside the base trading method, inside the advice function, this is where you would normally send out this dot advice uh, short or this dot advice long to give it a sell or buy order depending on what you want um, Gecko to do. So in here, I added two things. So originally, everybody has a trigger. The trigger is um, let trigger right here. That's for adding stop losses. And that's kind of a new way for you to write the buy and sell uh, code where it actually lets you also add stop losses. So what I did was I added uh, amount and percentage. Although I'll, I'll show you why percentage doesn't work in a bit. I added it and I probably will take it out by the time um, you guys actually play with the code uh, from my version of uh, of Gecko. Anyway, back to the mount. I just like, added a mount right here, and then after I added the mount, let's go down all the way down to right here. The first thing I do is check is if the mount is a uh, actually a number. So if if the mount's not a number, if it doesn't exist, for example, it wouldn't actually populate that amount within your strategy. Instead of writing the basic this dot advice uh, long, you actually have to write this dot advice, and then to do the direction. And I'm going to show you that right now, actually. Make it easier for you guys to see what I'm talking about. So this, looking at this right here, so this is um, the test strategy I wrote. If you, as you can see in here, inside this is inside the check function, as I mentioned. So inside is this dot advice. You want to have the brackets inside. So you can pass in the direction, uh, the amount. I left out the trigger. It's not like other programming languages where you have to specify specific variables inside your brackets. So point being, I only had a direction, which is short, and the amount is the amount that I want to sell, so that this all gets passed in um, into the base trading method. And that's where base trading method will send it out as an event 
to, and to any listeners and any plugins that's listening to that event, they work on that particular event. So in this case right here, the new direction dot mount is basically the mount that was sent over from here. So we need to check whether or not that's a number, whether or not that exists, so on and so forth. And once that's done, inside here is creating an advice variable. So in this advice variable, we're populating with the advice ID, the recommendation, um, the amount and percentage, and then if there's a trigger, it will populate the trigger as well. After that, it will emit the advice. So in this case, once this advice is emitted, Trader and Paper Trader are the two plugins that listen to the advice event. So inside the process advice event, like again, like a function of process the actual event is called process something. So process x, x event. So in this case, it's called process advice. So in here, I'm just going to, so you scroll down to here in the, in the direction, let amount is actually part of the existing code for trader.js. It's this additional um, part here, if advice that amount again, we're checking to make sure that the advice that amount is a valid um, number, is actually a number, not something that's not specified. So once it's there, we're going to fill amount, we can populate amount with advice that amount. So we're going to populate that information that we sent over you know, from the strategy uh, into base trading method, now into trader. So that's the idea. We're basically having this information of how much we want to buy to actually be sent over to the trader.js file, where it actually will then um, talk to the exchange and start the process of uh, buying a specific amount. So originally, the amount is... The amount that is determined by Gecko is basically how much fiat currency you have in your portfolio divided by the price times 95%. That's basically how they calculate originally. Again, we're not using that anymore. We are using the amount that we specify in the strategy itself. So that's why the amount gets filled this way from the vice amount instead of getting um, filled just by the entire portfolio balance. This is a very basic change overall. It's not very difficult to understand. So once that's changed, now I skip the cell section. It's very similar. I'll, I might go over it in a bit, but you can see that all it does now is we create an order with the direction, which is a buy, amount, which is now the amount that we sent over from the strategy. So the vice is actually the vice object. We send the whole object over as well. And the ID of this trade, that's basically it. Let's go back to what I was saying before, where I actually created both the amount and percentage so that you can pass in either one but then I'm pretty much dropping out percentage so the reason why percentage doesn't really work at least in my opinion is this so let's say that you have a thousand dollars in your fiat currency and you want to buy ten percent so you say buy ten percent so it uses a hundred hundred dollars and you have nine hundred dollars remaining but on your next trade you say okay like 10 candles down the line or whatever it is you want to buy another 10 percent you want to send that percentage amount it's going to only use 90 dollars because you only have 900 dollars left in your um, fiat currency portfolio so what you end up is you're buying less and less every time so you're not exactly buying that whole 10 percent that's the tricky part about using about layering buys the first tricky issue is that you can't really use percentage unless you calculate it correctly if you're calculating like this the first time you're buying is 10 percent the next time it's got to be more than 10 percent i i don't know the exact amount maybe 12 13 whatever the percentage is your percentage has to go up every time so that your amounts stay the same. Instead of using percentages, I'm thinking, why not just use amount and let the strategy calculate that specific amount? So it gets a little less confusing. So you know at least that you're buying $100 every single time or whatever amount that you're buying at. Let's say that you want to only divide it, your buys into three, for example. So $1,000, you buy $333.33. And you would send that out every single buy order until you completely exhausted your fiat currency. So, but going back to the trader and how it's actually going to talk to the exchange to process this trade. So originally, I was thinking of using the sandbox right over here. So if you guys don't remember, I mentioned that um, Coinbase Pro has a sandbox, which as you can see, the prices are very different. The current prices, this is live, is about $120 for Ethereum. But in Coinbase Pro Sandbox, Ethereum is still over $1,000 because the prices are not real. This is a place where you can test your bots, basically. I tried using this at first for testing, but I realized that the candles were get, that were getting created from the market was basically non-existent. Because if you look at the trade history on this side right here, 
there's actually a little bit of activity, which is not too bad. 955, 958. So there's actually four trades that happened, you know, in the last uh, minute or so. But then before that, you had to wait about half an hour, 926 before a trade actually happened. So essentially, there was not enough candle information getting generated for anything to even be tested. So what I ended up doing was just using Paper Trader instead of Trader. But once I did that, I realized Paper Trader itself have to be completely modified to handle these layer buy and sells that I did with Trader. And one of the first issues I ran into of, um, with Paper Trader was that it is a completely different system than Trader because Paper Trader doesn't have to actually talk to the exchange. It basically does all these mathematic calculations within the file to determine if you uh, the price amount you buy at there's no you know um, there's no slippage involved so that you would get the perfect price every single time so it's not very realistic in terms of testing performance but right now I'm not so much testing performance just testing to make sure that it even works so I do have to modify quite a few things in paper trader still the first thing was to make sure that paper trader matches up what trader does so in Trader, if we go all the way to the top here, you'll see right around here, you see this whole bunch of things. It's like the portfolio balance exposed. This is the part where it actually syncs up with the exchange in the very beginning, and it gets that information about how much asset you're holding. It gets that information from the exchange, and Gecko fills that information and sends that out as an event to let all the plugins know that this is how much money you have. Paper Trader? It doesn't do that. It does not send out the information because it'll let you set the uh, how much asset you have and how much currency you have in the config file. So, but it doesn't send that information out. So, first thing I had to do was modify Paper Trader. So, it actually, does do that. I had to add this information right here: process market start. So, at the start of the market, which in the Paper Trader scenario is just when you start running Gecko. <laughs> as soon as um, Paper Trader is enabled, it will have to run this particular method right here, which is Relay Portfolio Change, because you want it to actually send out this information right here, the asset and currency, to all the other plugins, and those plugins will be able to, to work with that information. And now the plugins that need this information is obviously your strategy, <laughs> because your strategy for a layer, buy, sell, it has to know how much um, money and how much asset you're holding at all times. Otherwise, your strategy is just not going to be able to calculate how much to buy and sell. Then I have to find a way to write a strategy that actually tests this actual layer, layering and buying and selling. So first thing I was writing was just like a test layer buy sell strategy. And in this case right here, all it really does is going to um, rely on the on portfolio change to populate the buy amount and buy counter. We're dividing the amount of fiat currency available into four, and then we'll be able to make four separate uh, buy orders. You can change this amount to whatever you want to, and the point being is once it has that information, it's going to start buying one-fourth of the assets every time the check function runs. So that's the idea. So, But it has to know that information first. It has to know how much fiat currency you currently have. So once it checks to see that there's no trade initiated, so there's basically it won't run into the situation where it tries to issue multiple buy orders when the first one hasn't finished. Even though it's a layer by sell, it's just going to finish layering buys first and then it does the layering sells. I mean, this is not a, obviously a, a usable strategy for actually profiting in the market. It's really just a strategy to test the, how layering process works. So that was the test strategy that I've written up, and I tested it um, in Paper Trader. It works, although it did that break something else during the test process. So what it ended up breaking after testing was that it, it broke Logger.js. Logger.js is um, the performance analyzer that Gecko has on by default. So this actually calculates the profit within Logger.js. I was getting this error message. It says cannot read property UTC of undefined. The simple thing right now is just to turn off performance analyzer. You can also try to fix it by really just saying if rt.entry at. So this will just even confirm if this uh, exists. So if RT entry at doesn't exist, then it won't even bother to uh, run the UTC function on that particular timestamp. That's probably a better way to fix it. But let's just leave it out for now. So something you guys can, can play with. But essentially, what my point is this. It's kind of like a waterfall kind of thing where actually once 
one issue leads to the next. You have to deal with them one at a time as you come across it. But I did feel like I dealt with most of the issues, and I I also wanted to create like an actual strategy that actually uses layering and buy and sell. So this is why I created. I created something called RSI Layer Buy Sell. What this strategy does is, as it says, this strategy buys RSI when it's less than thirty, and the previous RSI is uh, less than current RSI. So basically, what we're seeing is the, like a bump. If you see a drop like this, it won't. It will actually wait until this first. This little bump right here. Before it starts buying, and that's the idea with um, with the strategy of buy when it's uh, when it starts going up, even though it's below thirty, and then it'll just continue to buy that. It'll, it'll continue to buy as many times as it can. I think um, default. I think I also set it to uh, four layer buys, and then the strat sells when sells fifty percent when RSI is less than seventy, and previous RSI is greater than seventy. It's gonna go and hold on to your long position. Until it goes way past seventy, and then it falls below it. So once it falls below, that's when it sells. It will sell the first fifty percent, right? So it'll sell right here, and then it'll wait until it peaks up again, and then it will um, sell the other fifty percent when the RSI falls below seventy again. It will sell right over here. When it went past seventy, it will sell right over here. That's the general idea of how this strategy will work. So in this case, we see it here. So it pretty much lines up around here. So you see it sells right over here. So and then the second time it sells is right over here. So right after that the candle end as I mentioned. So it's still like even the second time you're still selling on an even greater peak. So this is something that it just happened to line up. I didn't run the strategy on actually this time frame. So I can't say it actually works exactly like this. But that's the general idea of how this strategy works. Uh, obviously this is just a an idea of how to use layer buy and sell. I wouldn't actually recommend using this strategy or any strategy because this is not financial advice. So this is pretty much what I came up with. I actually haven't had too much time running RSI layer buy sells to make sure it works the way I really wanted to. I haven't tested this strategy that well. You guys will definitely let me know if there's any bugs with, with this particular code. But the bottom line of layering buy and sell is this. Layering buy sells is an advanced strategy to reduce risk by not placing all your capital in one position and increases opportunity by selling at potentially higher profits. With Gecko, it is difficult to do correctly because it wasn't originally designed to do this and a lot of things can and will break, resulting in Gecko crashing. This setup should only be pursued if you already have successful experience performing layer buy sells as a day trader. So that's my video for today, guys. Just a couple of things. As a reminder, I am on Patreon. So if you guys would like to support me, if you guys like my content, definitely go to patreon.com slash crypto 49er and just be a patron. And for being a patron, you get an article once a month on the different things I'm thinking about to profit in this still bearish market. I mean, eventually it will turn bull. I mean, I will. I'll let you guys know one of these days. So for the month of January, my article was the best indicator that no one talks about. So for the month of February, I'm going to top this actually. So instead of having this the best indicator, there's a strategy to trade without indicators. So I'm going to um, talk about that in the next article. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely become a patron. You can be a patron as low as $2 per month and be able to have access to these articles once a month. So that's my video for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth finding. It isn't worth speculating. Peace out.